when Carl has spoken about why he became interested in neuroscience and psychiatry, he talks about the profound effect it's had on him to know and to treat patients with psychiatric disorders. And what I've learned and heard from Carl is his passion, Carl's passion for doing research that one day will enable thousands of people, millions of people with mental illness to be treated much more effectively than they are today. patients with treatment-resistant depression. He said when he was very depressed that uh, even neutral things, even simple neutral things like seeing a piece of paper on a desk, when he's depressed he can look at that and he can get a powerful negative feeling just from a piece of paper sitting on a desk. And then that, that creates a basic science question, where does valence or, or value, that subjective internal sense we have about something. Does it feel good or does it feel bad? What is that? What we've done in the lab then is using tools that we had developed earlier, uh, something called optogenetics. This is a way of using light to control individual kinds of neurons, even in a freely behaving mammal. Just like a conductor you know, conducting an orchestra, we can direct cells that live here and are, are, are a particular kind and that send a connection here. We can play in pattern of activity to that cell during behavior and see, is it positive for the animal or negative for the animal? Carl is one of the nicest and most remarkable people I have ever met. He, he's very relaxed. He's very almost soft-spoken. Um, in California jargon, I would call him almost a surfer dude. But underneath that surface is obviously an intense drive and passion to understand the brain, to really understand what's going on. Between 2004 and 2009 or so, we developed the optogenetic method to its fullest and it's now very useful. But we, we noticed a, a problem that uh, although we were getting insight into which kinds of cells underlie particular kinds of behavior, we didn't have detailed understanding of the wiring. So what we did was develop a method called Clarity. Clarity is a way of making the brain transparent, and it's a chemical engineering trick. We take out all the lipids, take out all the fats, keep all the interesting molecules locked in place with what's called a hydrogel, and that makes the brain transparent. And then uh, we can see the cells, and then see how they're wired up. And so we get a very full understanding of the system, its activity, and its wiring all together. First, I want to congratulate your foundation on uh, providing Carl this wonderful award. He uh, certainly deserves it, and you could not have selected a more deserving person. Now, both optogenetics and clarity are transformative advances across all areas of neuroscience. That's what makes each of them such amazing discoveries. I know my personal lab, many labs around the world, we're now able to do experiments to try to understand how the brain mediates behavior and how the brain malfunctions to mediate s symptoms of brain disorders. We're able to do that in a way that literally was not possible until Carl came on the scene. As you might imagine, Carl is very busy, <laughs> um, but he's very thoughtful in the way he manages the lab. So we have 
um, lab meetings and subgroups that are organized in such a way to allow everyone to get feedback somewhat regularly. Um, and then uh, considering his position, Carl himself is actually quite humble and down to earth um, and has a good sense of humor. The atmosphere of the group is very, very interactive and the reason is this group is very, very interdisciplinary. So people are working together but they are coming from really very, very different backgrounds. We have biologists, neuroscientists, uh, chemists, uh, engineers, and we interact a lot and we bounce ideas all the time. And, um, and Carl really create this whole atmosphere that you almost have absolute freedom. If you are a young scientist, who wants to do something very ambitious and very creative um, and very forward and very, and in part, pretty risky, Carl's Lab is the place to go. Uh, what I've described so far is the state of the art at this moment. Now, there's reason to think that brain states that are meaningful, that control behavior, that control how we feel, that control whether or not we're expressing a disease symptom, they may be distributed across the brain. You may not fully understand or control these complex states with a single fiber, a single point, a single spot of, of study in a fully intact brain. And what the huge opportunity that we have here now and that, that we propose to do with the, the support of the foundation is to take that single site approach and make it a global approach. Take our information exchange, our play in, our readout, and make it all across the brain at once. And we have several very new technologies that uh, we think will allow us to do that. Not only are these new technologies, but we're applying them to a very difficult problem, which is depression and depression-related symptoms. These are not easy things to study, but we think we can do it. We're very uh, motivated to do it. We have all the pieces uh, lined up, and it's just wonderful to have the, the opportunity to, to, to do it. And with this, the support of the, of the foundation, I think we can. The brain is perhaps the most complicated thing in the universe, and I, I'm certainly willing to believe there are things that we can't easily understand. Uh, but I don't think that a psychiatric disease is, is one of those things that we can't understand. I think we can. I think we will.